In these last days of November, while the tree through the studio window is showing its brightest yellow colors, the autumn flowers on the balcony are still in full bloom. My little kingdom is enjoying the silence and the peace of autumn. Some document art and old novels from the 13th century are getting read and studied for a new exhibition next spring, while past exhibitions are settling in Newcastle this autumn winter. Some cakes are baked and eaten, a new portrait is getting added to my portrait collection, and a cat is enjoying some naps nice and cozy wrapped in his wool blankets. Welcome in this new vlog. I wanted to share with you in this video some updates of my kingdom, what I'm working on right now and a few other things. So the first thing I wanted to share is the exhibition I created pieces for these past years for Le Son des Monuments Nationaux. There were three exhibitions and they are all traveling in different places all the time. Every, every, every six months they are changing and they have all been settled in new castles in different parts of France, in beautiful castles. In case you have the project to go to France this winter for the Christmas season, they are not in Paris, they are not totally around Paris, they are located in different parts of France in beautiful places, which are worth going. Uh, so I wanted to share that with you. The exhibition Fantasy pour un Palais, where I created the Baroque ship, is going to be in display at Le Château de Bussy Rabutin in Bourgogne, not very far from Dijon, from November 25 till May 4th, 2024. So you have quite many months to go if you plan to visit it, both to see the castle and the exhibition. And this uh, castle is really intriguing. I plan to go this uh, winter. I'm interested in the character, Le Comte de Bussy Rabutin, who owned this castle in the 17th century. He was a cousin of La Marquise de Sévigné, who was a very important lady writer from the 17th century, and he owned this castle. So he had collected, I think, 500 portraits of people from the court, and he wrote some sarcastic comments under all of them. So this was a very, very, um, well, funny and pretty special character. He was a total libertine, a lieutenant general of Louis XIV, writer, a bit the caricature of the aristocrat, if you will, but a very interesting character. If you didn't like my series about Le Comte de Tille, this libertine, I did a video, uh, video series about um, from the 18th century, the late 18th century, uh, you wouldn't like Le Comte de Bussy Rabutin at all. He is, I think, much worse than Le Comte de Tille, but he wrote, he had a very beautiful writing too, is famous now for his correspondence and also he wrote a book uh, sharing all the extravagances the nobility was doing at the time and he hid that under the shape of a novel but it's all the characters from Versailles could recognize themselves in the novel so it's pretty interesting so this exhibition is in this castle le château de Bussy Rabutin not far from Dijon till May 4th if you are interested and you will find all the links under this video from the different castles in case you want to know all the practical details to get there, how to get there and all that. And Magi Baroque, uh, for this exhibition I created Alcina, the character, and also the uh, castle on the Enchanted Island. So this one is at Le Château de Pierrefonds, which is in the north, east, slightly east of France at I think one hour, one hour and a half from Paris. And here it's going to be in display till February 4, 2024. And Le Champ des Ondes will be at Le Château de Carouge in the northwest of France. And um, here it's going to be in display till March 4th, 2024. So you have some nice places to visit too if you plan to go to France this winter. I'm also right now studying and reading all the documents and um, text for the new exhibition next spring, also organized by Le Son des Monuments Nationaux, like the past exhibition I collaborated with. And for this piece, I have to create, I have to be inspired by some novels and some art from the 13th century, from the medieval era, which is a bit new for me. I didn't work a lot on the medieval era, but I'm very, very interested in these centuries. The 13th and the, and the 12th are very interesting century for the medieval um, era in Europe and in France, and it's a very fascinating time. So I'm excited to work on this one. But I will share more about all that later this winter after the Christmas season. And 
as we are now gently reaching the end of November, I've started to put out all my Christmas boxes and I started to think about how I would organize my decor in the different rooms outside this year with all the past decors I created, of course, but also with the new ones. So I'm just starting to be a little excited about that. I just received this week a lithography from the early 20th century for my portrait walls. It's not an old engraving, it's a lithography, so it has no big, big value. But it is the portrait of a German artist, an engraver, and his name was Jean-Georges Ville, Johannes Georg Ville, and he spent his entire life in Paris as an artist engraver of the king in the 18th century. And I recently read the second volume of his diary, his own diary. And as I need my daily dose of time traveling, reading the diary of this artist was wonderful and a very powerful way to go back to the daily life and the mundane detail of an artist in Paris in the second half of the 18th century from Louis XV era to the French Revolution. It's not of course an exciting novel, there is no big crazy adventures of any kind, it's really the diary of a normal person who had comfortable income, he was not poor, but he talks about his art, his clients, his students, but also his little escapade, the show he likes to see, uh, the books he likes to read, and all the historical events which took place also at the time. Now, I can't resist to read you a few excerpts just to give you a taste of it. On July 5, 1791, he talks about his home because his son has recently moved in with him, with his wife, and he has reorganized the different apartments of his home. I have slept for the first time because of the move from the second to the third floor. In my nice and comfortable bed, I have renovated, refurnished and decorated this third floor the best and the most neatly possible. The walls have been whitened, painted and colored. Everything which could be decorated has been renovated. My cabinet, which is turned now into my bedroom, is decorated everywhere with good and beautiful drawings. In my main room, there is a mix of paintings and drawings and engravings from great masters. And in the corridor, there is my own artwork. The antechamber is ornated with various things. And here it talks about an escapade which was really, really nice. It was some delightful pages of the diary. August 1784-17 As the weather was quite nice, I decided to go to Montserre to draw the ruins of Bequazo Castle that I've been told were beautiful. So I went there with public coaches, with my students, Monsieur Gutenberg, Clauber and Preisler. We had to lodge at La Place Royale, the only inn of the place. And interestingly enough, there were beds in the two rooms. But the beds were made out of rattan and the pillowcases were filled with sand and eggshells. The windows had broken glasses at few places, but the inn owner had glued some paper on those gaps and he also added some fresh cow dung to fill these gaps and that was as useful as pleasant to look at. Now I need to find volume 1. I found volume 2 on eBay and uh, there was not volume 1 to be found but it is available on print on demand on Amazon and a few other places. So if you're interested, you can find it on print on demand, which is quite nice. And it is also available for free on the website of the French uh, National Library, Gallica. So I'll put the link if you just want to look at a few pa pages, you can do that. And you can also see his manuscript with this really neat and precise handwriting. So it's only available in French. So for those who speak a bit of French, uh, you, you can read it, it's not translated, it was only published once in 1858, I think, 1857, but 1857. But it's a precious document for those of us who like to time travel, who like to read 
writings from uh, people, especially artists from the past, who both talk about their life, he talks about his art, the, his art as an engraver, when he has a new engraving for sale, which is published in magazine that people are going to buy. It's really interesting. Also, I was not super familiar with the world of engraving, which was really the main way to see any any artistic thing before because there was no printing, there was not all the possibilities we have now, camera, <laughs> you forget it, photography, anything like that. No, engraving was really the way to make any famous painting known and unavailable for anyone to buy it. So, And so rare, it's pretty rare to find and to read uh, diaries of artists from the 18th century. You can find writing from um, a lot of artists from the 19th, 20th, but earlier it's a little more rare so it's quite precious and it's quite interesting and I found it really interesting so I thought a handful of people would probably think the same. You will find the information if you want to go further about this engraver and if you want to, to check his manuscript and the diary which is available online. Since the beginning of autumn I try to improve and practice my cooking and baking skills. I'm not a good cook at all but I want to I want to improve especially now that my kitchen is better it inspires me to spend more time in this room. So I've started to do a cake every weekend even if I don't have guests or specific persons coming to me. And last weekend I tried a carrot cake with carrots and walnuts and spices, a very, very easy cake to do, perfect for my basic skills. And it tasted very much like gingerbread and it was not very greasy or anything like that. So just a sort of cake where you can eat a lot of it without feeling guilty at all. The icing was not perfect at all. I need to improve on that. And I need a long cake dish. Now that I'm cooking and baking a little more, I need a bit few more plates, but I'm going to go to the thrift store next time to see what I could find. Thank you very much for watching this little update. I will see you soon with all my Christmas videos. I'm going to start to do my decor in a few days. I have to continue to work on the new Christmas workshop, which is going to open in December, but all the other Christmas workshops are open right now and you can join them. If you want, just like me, to start to create your own paper decor collection that you will grow year after year and have a totally unique, one-of-a-kind decor that nobody will have. So you can join any of these workshops and the links are just under this video. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you very soon and don't forget to give a thumbs up if you enjoyed what you saw, it's very helpful for my videos.